What's going on guys, my name is Trevor, welcome back to the channel. The Hunger Games, the Battle of Songbirds and Snakes hits theaters this weekend, and it's a prequel to one of my all-time favorite franchises. Today I'm sharing with you guys my non-spoiler thoughts on the movie. Jump your way down below in the comment section, what did you think of the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes? Let me know your thoughts on this movie down below in the comment section, hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, and let's get into this. So starting off, I didn't have much expectations for this movie. I was excited, but I was also a little bit nervous because I love the Hunger Games movie so much. So coming into this one, I was, I was hesitant but nonetheless I did have some excitement for it and I think that's why I enjoyed this one so much because I wasn't expecting much and I got so much and I love that about this movie we're following young President Snow young Coriolanus Snow that is a very hard name to say just got that one down for the first time but young Coriolanus Snow is trying to make his way into Pan Am he is dirt poor as Peter Dinklage tells him you ain't got a pot to piss in so he's dirt poor throughout this movie he's trying to make his way in Pan Am wake his way up in the capital and his father is one of the people responsible for creating the Hunger Games and we're on our 10th annual Hunger Games and Coriolanus Snow is trying to really get his foot in the door to get a grant to get his family money and to really step up his way into the capital. So he's doing things right by his family, but might be doing them at the expense of people coming from the districts. And Cory Lana Snow starts giving out all these ideas and he becomes one of the first mentors for our protagonist, Rachel Zegler, who plays a tribute from District 12. Shout out Katniss Everdeen. And Rachel Zegler is playing Lucy Gray Baird and Lucy Gray Baird is one of the most likable characters throughout the entirety of the Hunger games universe and that's all due to rachel zegler she is so nice she's so likable she is someone with nothing who literally got the worst fate of pretty much anyone in the world and she still has a smile on her face she's still there to sing songs she's still there to get people to like her and cory elena snow is her mentor and their relationship is great. They slowly start to fall in love. And it's just a different twist that I wasn't expecting them to take with this movie. And I love that. The setup of this movie is probably my favorite part before we get to the actual Hunger Games. Because Coriolanus and Capital and everyone's really getting ideas for how to make the Hunger Games more likable. Because no one seems to be watching them nowadays. Hunger Games aren't very popular. How can they get this to be basically like a number one hit America's Got Talent type reality TV show. So I love the way they kind of dive into that and dive into that world in the setup of this movie and I thought the setup was absolutely fantastic. Then we get into the Hunger Games, which of all the Hunger Games we've seen, this Hunger Games might have been my least favorite. I was very attached to the character of Lucy Gray Baird, but the arena itself was just kind of basic and there were certain things in there that was like, we've seen a lot better, but I understand we're in such like a previous time, we're during the 10th annual Hunger Games that they didn't, maybe don't have the budget to kind of go all big. So I appreciated it, but I also wanted something just a little bit more throughout the Hunger Games themselves. And the Hunger Games themselves, they're just brutal. I forget how brutal these movies are and throughout it, you're like, God, I had to look away several, several times, but nonetheless, Rachel Zegler is absolutely great. And Tom Blythe, who plays young Cory Elena Snow, he's just so likable. He's so charismatic. I cannot believe how much I like this character, and they did such a good job of building him up and really making him a likable character throughout this movie. But they also do a thing when the Hunger Games end, they have so much more time in the movie, and the movie might overstay its welcome just a little bit, but they have this kind of whole show as like, we all know President Snow is like a terrible human. How does he become a terrible human? And I'm glad this movie really hit on that and really showed that. You get little tidbits throughout the entirety of the movie of this guy is not as likable or as cool as we all think. That's for sure. Rachel Zegler has several performances throughout this movie and she's singing it almost like that folklore kind of genre where it's not very poppy and mainstream as Rachel Zegler can sing, but it's still very good music and it's some of my favorite part throughout this movie. She had like three times she was singing where I was getting chills and I was like, this is a way to use Rachel Zegler's talents because she's crushing it right now. The World of Pan Am, absolutely great. Tom Blythe, absolutely great. Rachel Zegler, absolutely great. You know who else was freaking great? Peter Dinklage and Viola Davis. Peter Dinklage is just just a dick. I mean, you cannot cut it any other way. You do not like this guy. And Viola Davis... Can we call her the best actress of all time? I think we should start because she plays this weird, crazy lady, the creator of The Hunger Games, and she just gives it her all. And that's what I love about Viola Davis. Every time she's on screen, she gives it her absolute all, and she freaking nails it. I'm gushing about this movie. I love it. I just can't stop talking about it. The more I think about it, the more I like it. A couple problems I have. 
this movie's told in three parts. I think part one and part two work very, very well. But I think part three, they yank on the reins a little bit. It's been like the pacing slows down a little. We're moving so fast in the first act. We're moving so fast in the second act. From setting up the Hunger Games to the actual Hunger Games, I feel the third act was kind of yanking them back just a little bit too much. But on the contrary, they give us so much about Coriolanus and how he's going to be kind of turned to the dark side. So, end of the day, I don't have many problems with this movie. The more I think about it, the more I absolutely love it. It's becoming one of my favorite movies of the year, and I want to see it again in theaters. My last final gripe with the movie is that it's two hours and 37 minutes, and making a movie that long is tough. I think it could have been cut probably 25, 30 minutes. Just sometimes I was feeling that runtime a little bit. Nonetheless, at the end of the day, I love The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. And overall, for a score, I'm going a 4.5 out of 5. I put a 4 out of 5 on Letterboxd, and I'm, just, I'm going 4.5 now. I really, really love this one. Let me know your thoughts on The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes down below in the comments section. Hit the like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Come back in a couple days. We'll have a ranking of all five Hunger Game movies. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I'll see you in the next one.